It's been a little while since I made a video, but today we're going to get into it with some of the projects I've been working on. For this video, we're going to be going over the lure turner I made. So I'm going to go over what this is used for and how I made it. And at the end, of course, as usual, I'm going to post all the files to make this so you can assemble this for yourself and dry your own lures. So this is just a design I came up with and 3D printed. All this does is spin around and it holds your fishing lures on the end here. That way, whatever clear coat you decide to put on there dries evenly. Now this can be used for two of the most common clear coats out there. I think the most popular out there is coating your lures in two-part epoxy. So with that, you would brush it on and then just stick it on here. If you let it just dry normally, it would sag, get bubbles, and it just wouldn't come out right. There's no point in making your own custom bait, spending all that time and effort to have a crappy clear coat. The other method, which is what I use, is UV resin. So I paint on UV resin and then cure that with UV light. I like it a little better than epoxy. It has an unlimited working time, so it'll stay liquid until the UV light hits it. This setup works just as good for that. Only difference being you would have to stick this in some kind of UV cure box. So we're gonna get into the parts. We're gonna start with the lure turner before the lure holders. This is just the black frame I designed on Fusion 360 and printed out. I can clear the supports out. And this holds this motor. It's just a rotisserie motor I got off of Amazon. It was like 10 or 15 bucks for a two pack with the cord. I'm gonna post that in the description below. And it's got this little brass piece that slides on and goes into the plate, which I also designed. I probably could have avoided this, but I was a little worried with the UV weakening the plastic. So I used half inch PVC end caps that go on here. And this is gonna hold the lure holder, which holds the actual lure and that sticks in here and spins around. I did make this thing a little bit modular. So it's gonna be a little hard to tell. I haven't cleared out the supports here yet, but these legs, you can stick another piece in here and that's gonna make this longer and make it more stable just in case you're using some really big baits on it. I'm gonna leave this going in the background while we go over the lure holder, which is really the heart of this project. There's a couple different working parts to this. I'm gonna show you all the 3D printed parts so you hopefully have an idea of how to assemble it. But a huge shout out to the engineered angler. I got most of this idea from him. This was sort of his original design I modified for my own purposes. So his idea was using these telescopic back scratchers and that's what these telescopic metal tubes are made out of. The ends were attached here at the end of the metal pole and I just snapped them off. So what that allows you to do, I don't know what kind of baits everyone here makes, but I make a wide variety. So if I wanna make a two inch little trout lure, that's okay. And if I want to make some giant monstrosity, I can do that too. This accepts anywhere from a two inch lure to probably, I can't even fit the whole thing on camera, probably about 14 inches. So that just sticks in here. You put your lure in here, stick it in here, and then turn it on and it'll turn. This uh, accepts five of these. So you can have five different baits drying at the same time. We'll go over the anatomy of these so you know how to build them yourselves. This is a probably about two inch piece of half inch PVC. This is a 3D printed shim I made just to make sure this fits the inside diameter of this and can be glued together. And remember, all these files are gonna be posted in the description below. These two are separate sizes to fit respectively on each part of this telescopic back scratcher, lure holder, whatever you want to call it. These slide on here. And now this is where we vary a little bit from the engineered angler's design. So not so much what he did, but a lot of lure dryers I see out there. It's usually two separate halves with some wire or springs going in between. And something like that's gonna be hard to put a lure on that's still wet with the clear coat on it. I wanted something where I could put a lure blank like this on here. I'm gonna move this because I keep hitting it. So I could just put a lure blank on here, paint it, clear coat it, and dry it without taking it off. So these have little flat spots so it can just stand on its own. You don't have to worry about that falling over. And instead of going with wire and springs, I use these little alligator clips. And these are what hold the little hook hanger eyes on the lure. These aren't going anywhere. 
And then what's connecting this piece to this piece is actually just a little bit of fiberglass. I got this fiberglass wire running kit for like $15 and just cut it into little two inch sections. And that allows you to put a little bit of tension on the lure. So it's gonna stay in there good. It's not gonna rock back side to side. And if you have like a jointed lure, it's gonna keep those two halves separated and not have them rubbing up together. And like I said here, I make a lot of different baits. So this is a little four inch jerk bait I'm working on. This is the Monster Minnow. This is a seven inch, three and change ounce bait for striped bass I'm making too. I wanted to make one lure holder that could hold any lure I wanted to make. And I think I did pretty good with that. These things are very sturdy. They're not going anywhere. You can paint them, brush on. It's, it's not going to fall off and it will be held by the same lure turner. So you can dry whatever you would like at the same time. So this really doesn't cost too much in materials. The PVC was dirt cheap. The end caps are 50 cents a piece. A two foot section of this PVC pipe is probably, I think it was like two or three dollars. These telescopic back scratchers, I got a six pack for $7. There was a 200 count box of these little alligator clips for another $10 and a 30 foot kit of this fiberglass that I cut into little two inch sections was another 10 or 15 bucks. So I think this is a very nice setup you guys can do for the cheap. And like I said, if you're using some kind of two part epoxy, this is good to go. And if you're using some kind of UV cure resin, you just have to stick this whole thing in a UV cure box. And then for the 3D printed parts, we just have the faceplate, the frame, the two lure holder holders, and the little shim for the PVC. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you can find some sort of use for this. We're just going to cover a little bit on the future of this channel for now. So it's been a while since I made a video. I think we're going to change up the channel for a little bit from now on. I have some new ideas I want to implement. I think we're going to focus a little more on tutorials. I have a pretty decent selection of lures out now. So I think now I'm going to gravitate into teaching you how to make your own. So whatever ideas you have, you can make your own and 3D print them yourselves. Because I'll never be able to keep up with the demand of every single lure everyone wants. And hopefully you guys can share those with each other as well. So look forward to some CAD tutorials in the future. And also, I think I'm going to go on the back end and start focusing on just making lures. Not every one of them is going to have a video posted for it. I want to start doing some actual fishing. Like, you know, you can make the best lures in the world. I can make a ton of baits, but it really doesn't matter if people don't know how they fish. And I've been neglecting fishing quite a bit, just focusing on making lures, and I'd like to do some more of it. So I think I'm going to take some baits, keep making baits in my free time, and then do some actual fishing videos, show off the lures I make in there, and then the ones that people find are popular, they want to see made. I'll make some videos and then post those for you guys to use. Keep throwing your suggestions for new lure ideas down in the comments below. I'd be happy to keep making them. And look forward to some cool new video ideas in the future. Thank you guys for watching.